Let's say you're driving around in the middle of nowhere and you get a low battery warning. You freak out. What do you do? Well, it's not that difficult, actually. If you look on an app like ZapMap, you'll find that you're never really that far away from a charger. But maybe you're a bit paranoid and you don't want to rely on chargers. Maybe you want some other kind of backup. Maybe a battery is the backup you need. So I could have started this video concocting some sort of situation where I'm out in the middle of nowhere with a really low battery charge and I'm freaking out. And there'd be a thumbnail of me freaking out like that. But I'm not going to do that because it just propagates the idea of range anxiety. And most seasoned EV drivers don't have range anxiety because you realise there are actually chargers in more places than you think. And certainly if you're able to charge at home, then really, you'd have to be quite an idiot to run out of charge. This is the first time I've ever been stuck on a motorway before. And it's my own damn fault. Like a real Wally. It's the second time that I've broken down in the Nero and it shouldn't happen, it's completely my fault. So no, I'm at a location fairly close to my home and uh, the charge is not even that low anyway. Interestingly, the AA say that the number of EVs running out of charge has dropped by 70% in the past few years and it only makes up 2% of all of their EV cases. Makes you wonder what the other 98% are, right? It's probably the 12 volt battery. Get yourself a battery starter, honestly. But let's say you've misjudged your range a little bit and you are stuck in the middle of nowhere. What do you do? Well, obviously, electricity is ubiquitous, right? So you could just knock on someone's door and just ask to plug in there. But if you're English like me and would rather chop off a limb than do that, a battery is an option. Let's look in the boot. This is the EcoFlow Delta Max. It's a two kilowatt hour battery, fits in the boot. It's very heavy, but it could be the emergency backup you want. So I already have the Delta II. It's half the capacity of this, much lighter. And I tried charging the Leaf with it a while back and it didn't work. And I wasn't sure why it didn't work, but actually some comments in the video told me it's because the electricity supply wasn't grounded and that's what the Leaf wants. So I've got the Delta Max from EcoFlow and they also send me a grounding adapter. So this is what you need to charge on the Leaf and probably a few other EVs. And that's what it is. That's a grounding adapter. And it comes with a USB lead, strangely. You can see that you've got a USB connection got an ethernet connection or what looks like an ethernet connection a normal hole for a plug there as well so let's see how we plug this into the battery so the first step is to connect your usb lead in there you must use a usb lead that comes with the grounding adapter and we'll plug the power lead in as well and the usb lead goes into the battery there's two usb ports on the battery it must go in the left one apparently i don't know why it has to be the left but it does and the plug goes in the back now you can turn on your battery Make sure the USB is on and make sure the AC is on as well. And you'll see we've got hundred percent. So there we go. We now have a grounded battery ready to plug in the car. And obviously the next thing we need is to plug it in with the granny cable or the emergency cable or whatever you want to call it. So as you can see, we're starting with 22% battery, 16 miles range. So let's see how much we can add. I'll turn off the car because otherwise it beeps like hell. And make sure you turn off the charging timer. You can see the charge light is on, so it's all good. And you can see we're now outputting just over two kilowatts. And at the moment, I mean, we've lost 2% already on the battery. And at the moment, that's saying 39 minutes. And now you can hear the fan has started up. So now it's depositing that whole two kilowatt hours of battery back into the car. And if you're wondering how much you're going to get in terms of extra range, well, let's say this car does 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour. That will give you seven miles of extra range, which should be enough really to find a charger. It's quite easy in regions where efficiency is expressed as miles per kilowatt hour, because then you know how many miles you're going to get per kilowatt hour, of course. If, if you deal with kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers, then it's a bit harder to work out. Well, it's for me anyway, because I'm terrible at maths. So this is where having an efficient EV can really give you a smug grin. As smug as you can be stranded in the middle of a forest. Now, if you want to be really fancy, let's plug in a solar panel as well. Now, obviously a solar panel is not going to generate very much electricity. This is a 200 watt panel, but 
you know, it all helps, right? I think I just trod in fox poo. Watch my video to see how to set it up. So you can see the solar panels giving us about 85 watts. It doesn't make a massive difference, obviously, does it? But every little helps. So the time I was stranded on the side of the motorway and the other time I was driving into Canterbury and also stranded, both because of my own errors, this actually would have come in really handy. Not the solar panel so much. I wasn't going to whip that out on the side of the motorway, but the battery would have been really useful actually because it would have just got me just that little bit further I needed to get to get to a charger. And actually when you consider that this is taking something like 40, sort of 40 something minutes to charge up, well I was waiting a long long time, I think it was a couple of hours, I was waiting for the recovery truck. I've now been waiting one hour 20 minutes. So something like this, although it's not as fast as a jerry can, it's still not bad. So as you can see, it takes less than an hour to put all of this energy back into the car. Cars have a minimum amount of power that they're going to take, something like 1.3 kilowatts I think. So the solar panel, you're not going to be able to just plug that into the battery with no charge in the battery and expect your car to charge because it won't. But if you're camping, for instance, and your car sat for a long time, then perhaps that's pretty good, isn't it? Plugging the solar panel into the battery and then you can just give your car a little bit of extra juice throughout the day. If you are thinking of getting the battery or the panel or the grounding adapter, then do follow my links in the description. None of this equipment is particularly cheap. The battery itself is over £1,000. I can't give you the exact number because EcoFlow changed their prices quite a lot with sales and things. I use it all the time actually at home. I plug the vacuum into it when I'm vacuuming the car and drilling and stuff like that. But I would recommend the EcoFlow Delta 2 more than this one, or the Delta Max 2, because they are LFP batteries. Uh, LFP batteries last much longer than these do. And funnily enough, I've just got a notification saying that we've got a power cut at home. So I should probably get back home and plug things into the other batteries that we've got. Well, the battery's finished doing its thing, so let's have a look in the car and see what kind of range we've got. We have 20 miles on the range meter and 27% battery. So just remember, it's very unlikely you'll run out of charge in an EV. Please don't worry about it. Don't have nightmares. Thank you very much for watching. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos. And I'll be back very soon. Bye for now.